Hi and welcome back to Guided Hacking. Today we will look at egg hunting and how we can use this technique to find the address of our shellcode during runtime. If we cannot predict its address or use, for example, a CPU register to redirect the control flow to it. To demonstrate this technique, we are going to exploit the DocPrint Pro version 8.0 software. And to get started, we first of all go to WinDBG, Settings, Debugging Settings, and enable postmortem debugging. So we don't have to attach the process every time before crashing it. Afterwards, since this is not a free software and we don't want to purchase a registration key, we simply click on Try, which allows you to use the software a hundred times which is more than enough to craft the exploit and weaponize it. The vulnerability we are going to exploit is a simple SEH-based buffer overflow, and depending on how you structure your exploit, the shellcode part of the payload will end up on the heap. The heap is dynamically allocated, and the addresses usually change. This means that most of the time we cannot rely on jump code or similar things to redirect the control flow to our shellcode to obtain arbitrary code execution. First, we create a long, unique pattern string, for example using msf pattern create, and then go to file, add url, and paste the string in here. This will open up a new WinDBG window, and as we can see, we received an access violation. If we print the SEH chain and take the very last entries, 7a653378 in my case, we can use msf pattern offset to determine the exact offset of the override. In this case, since we used a pretty long pattern string, we get multiple candidates. You can use a technique called binary tree searching, where you split the chunk into 50% A's and 50% B's to narrow it down. Through that technique, plus appending the unique pattern string, we can determine that the exact offset for the SEH override is 3876, and 3880. For the exploit writing, we can quit the two WinDBG windows and open our favorite text editor to write the actual exploit code. Since this is a local exploit and we won't achieve remote code execution, we don't have to open up any connections, but instead can simply write to a file and copy the content of that file into the text box to cause the buffer overflow and eventually achieve code execution. What we want to do is simply open up a text file, for example exploit.txt, and since we are writing bytes, we have to open it in the wb mode instead of just the w mode. Then we can simply declare the offset we found earlier, which is 3876. Following that, we have our nseh, which I'll set to hex 41s, or all a's, and then our seh, which I'll set to all b's. To craft the payload, we are going to use a buffer consisting of a bunch of knobs times the offset, and then our final payload will be the buffer plus the nseh plus the seh. And we want to write that to the file. Next, we can open up a simple Windows terminal, navigate to the script's location, and execute it. Opening the exploit.txt file, we can copy its content and open the docprint software again. Go to File, Add URL, and paste in the content. Don't worry about the hex 90s not showing up. Knobs are simply non-printable characters, so it's perfectly normal that you only see the A's and the B's. Still, adding this URL causes a crash, and WinDBG opens again. And we can take a look at the exception handler chain. It might be confusing that it doesn't print 4.1 and 4.2, but 6.1 and 6.2, but if you look at the ASCII table and its hex values, you will notice that 6.1 and 6.2 are simply the lowercase equivalent of the capital A and capital B we used for overriding. This indicates that the software is actually converting our uppercase characters to lowercase characters, 
but since the shellcode will end up in a different memory region, this does in fact not apply to it in this case. Nonetheless, we have successfully overwritten the SEH chain and can now look for a PPR instruction sequence to redirect the control flow. To do that, we can, again, use RP++ or WinDBG scripts to look for a pop register, pop register, return instruction sequence. I showcased how to do that in previous articles and videos, so I will not demonstrate this again to save some time. One of those instruction sequences can be found at the address hex 100602D, which shows we have a pop EDI, pop ESI return sequence. We are going to use that gadget to redirect to the NSEH from where we are going to utilize the short jump instruction, EB, to jump six bytes over the SEH to our egg hunter. We can go back to our exploit and replace the SEH with the address of our PPR gadget, which was at, if we convert the NDNS, hex 2D, hex 06, hex 01, hex 10. And for the NSEH, we want to use a short jump, so hex EB. We want to jump six bytes, so hex 06. And then to keep the stack aligned, we simply add two knob instructions. Following that, we want to add our egg hunter to the exploit. There are various egg hunters we could choose from. The most important part to pay attention to is the fact that egg hunters for x86 Windows systems won't work on x64 Windows systems and vice versa, and the syscall numbers might change with Windows versions. So since my lab environment this time is a Windows 10 x86 Windows system, we have to find and use an egg hunter that was written for this architecture. Even if you want to exploit x86 software on an x64 system, you still would have to use x64 egg hunting code. The actual process of writing your own egg hunter is out of scope for this part of the exploit development course, since you can mostly rely on already existing egg hunters. One of them, for example, uses the Windows API NT-Access Check and Audit Alarm, whereas others are based on registering your own SEH handler and then using that handler to enumerate through the process's memory. And this is exactly what an egg hunter does. You mark your shellcode with an egg, and for most proof of concepts you will find online this egg is going to be wood wood. The egg basically consists of four bytes that are repeated twice in order to eliminate false positives. The egg hunter then enumerates through the process's memory and looks for that marker. If it finds the marker twice directly after each other, it will redirect the control flow to the memory address directly after the marker. The only problem is that the egg hunter has to access memory regions that are potentially unmapped, and by that invalid, or memory regions it does not have access to. By default this would lead to a crash of the process, so we have to either use our custom SEH that can handle it, or certain Windows APIs such as anti-access check and audit alarm that can try to access that memory and even if it is invalid memory, not cause a crash. I already prepared a common Windows 10 egg hunter that you can also find online, because as I said earlier, you don't have to write your own egg hunter for most exploits.